Hi everyone, I'm Cheryl. In this problem, we're going to be sketching the space curve 4t minus cosine t sine t on the interval from 0 to 3 pi over 2, and then we're going to determine what the arc length of that curve is going to be. All right, so let's begin by getting a sketch. I'm going to begin by plotting some points. So let's just let t equal 0, pi over 2, pi, and 3 pi over 2 for some sample points. So let's see what happens to my curve. The x value, when t equals 0, will be 0. The cosine of 0 is going to be 1, so the y coordinate will be a negative 1, and the sine of 0 is 0. At pi over 2, I will have 2 pi. The cosine of pi over 2 is 1, so that'll be I'm sorry, the cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and negative 0 is just 0, and the sine of pi over 2 is 1. Plugging in pi, I'll have 4 pi. The cosine of pi is negative 1, and minus a negative 1 is a positive 1, and the sine of pi is 0. And finally, at 3 pi over 2, I'm going to have 6 pi for my x-coordinate, and the cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and minus 0 is 0, and the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Okay, so I can go ahead and plot these points, but before I do that, I want you to notice something. If I'm looking strictly in the yz plane, I've got minus cosine t sine t. That's going to give me a unit circle. So I'm going to just sketch in a unit circle here to help me get an idea of what this graph looks like. Now, because the x value is changing, that means I'm basically creating a cylinder that goes out along the x-axis. So I'll come out and say I have a cylinder right along that x-axis. So I can kind of get a feel of what that shape is going to look like. OK, now let's go ahead and plot these points. The first point I have is 0, negative 1, 0. Well, again, on the yz axis, that's going to be negative 1, 0, which is easy to see. That's going to be right at this location. And the x coordinate is 0, so that point will be right in here. The next point is 2 pi, 0, 1. Again, on the yz axis, that's easy to see. That's this point, but I need to go out 2 pi units on the x axis. So that's about this length. So I'm going to be coming right about to here. The next point is 4 pi, 1, 0. Again, 1, 0 on the yz plane, that's easy to see. That's going to be this location. But I have to go out 4 pi on the x-axis. So again, that's this length. So that's going to take me right about out to here. And then finally, I have 6 pi, 0, negative 1. 0, negative 1 on the yz plane is easy to see. But I need to take this and move it out. 6 pi units along the x-axis. So if you can imagine this cylinder coming out, it's going to be on the underside of that cylinder. So I'll be to here, and then I'm going to move 6 pi units out, so it's going to be on the underside of that cylinder. And if you draw this curve in, you can kind of envision that it's wrapping around the cylinder. This is going to be a circular helix. Okay. Well, that's a rough idea of the curve. The next thing we want to find is the arc length. What is the length of that curve going around my cylinder? Well, in order to do that, we need to find the integral from a to b of the norm of r prime. So let's take a minute and find r prime. So I already have r. r prime is going to be 4 and sine t cosine t. All right, so let's fill this into our formula. Limits in integration, first of all. I want to find the arc length from 0 to 3 pi over 2. So that's 0 to 3 pi over 2. The next piece is the norm of r prime. So to find the norm of r prime, I need to take the sum of the squares of each of those components and take the square root of that. So the square root of 4 squared, which is 16, 
plus sine squared t plus cosine squared t. And of course, dt. All right, let's simplify that integrand. I'll have the integral from 0 to 3 pi over 2. And notice that I have sine squared plus cosine squared underneath that radical. Well, we know that sine squared t plus cosine squared t equals 1. So that entire radical will reduce to simply the square root of 17, because it's 16 plus 1 dt. OK, now my integration is fairly simple, because I'm just integrating a constant. So I've got the square root of 17 times t evaluated from 0 to 3 pi over 2. Plugging in my upper limit, I'm going to have 3 pi over 2 times root 17. And then I subtract what happens when I plug in the 0, which is just root 17 times 0. And my final result is 3 root 17 pi divided by 2 for my arc length. I hope that was helpful. Thanks.